This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time. Content presented in the following podcast is for information purposes only. Views and opinions expressed in this podcast are solely those of the host and guest and may not represent the views and opinions of the Whole Care Network. Always consult with your physician for any medical advice, and always consult with your attorney for any legal advice. And thank you for listening to the Whole Care Network. You know, you don't want to be in a situation where if you could just take a little bit of effort earlier and just be aware of where things are and, and what's been going on. It can really take hours and hours of, of work and a lot of anxiety and stress and, and worry. You know, take that just can take it away. Caring for aging parents or other loved ones while working, raising children and trying to live your own life. Wondering how to find the time for your personal health and happiness. Well, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast, the show where real family caregivers share how to be happy and healthy while caring for others. Now, here's your host, family caregiver and certified caregiving consultant, Elizabeth Miller. Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Happy Healthy Caregiver Podcast on the Whole Care Network. If this is your first time listening, welcome. This is a podcast produced bi-weekly to help family caregivers integrate self-care and caregiving into their lives. Each episode has an accompanying show notes page, so if you would like the details about the topics, products, and resources we speak about, you'll find the show notes by going on the website, happyhealthycaregiver.com, and underneath the podcast menu, click the image for today's show. Did you know I offer complimentary coaching sessions for family caregivers? You might want to pick my brain on something, find out about resources, create a self-care plan, or just have someone to talk to as a way to release the emotional pressure valve on someone who's going to get it. I'm a certified caregiving consultant, and I hope you take advantage of this offer. You'll find details and a scheduling link on the happyhealthycaregiver.com website, and I'll also link to it in the show notes. Before we get into today's Caregiver Spotlight episode, I want to first shine the light on our episode sponsor, My Data Diary. If you were contacted in an emergency, would you be scrambling to find or get to the information you need? Happy Healthy Caregivers partner, My Data Diary, is here to help. Their affordable digital family information management software gives you one place for everything. This easy-to-use solution is your family's vault for all the essential documents you need at your fingertips or that you might need to share with others on your care team. My Data Diary Plus stores all your family's basic personal, legal, and health information for every stage of life, and the tool captures detailed information such as lists of passwords, instructions to get into your parents' house, titles to cars, important contact numbers, and information to help you celebrate a life. I'm grateful to My Data Diary Plus for granting all the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast listeners a discount. You can receive 15% off the $50 one-time price per household by visiting mydatadiary.com and use the discount code HAPPYHEALTHY. That's mydatadiary.com with code HAPPYHEALTHY. Ben Mandelbaum grew up in a home along with his 14 siblings where he witnessed his parents care for his great-grandmother and then his grandmother. Later, Ben was also part of his dad's care team. His dad recently passed from ALS. Ben's background is in finance for skilled nursing communities. In this episode, we talk about living life while caring for others, the difference between Medicare and Medicaid, what benefits Medicaid can help families with, and how his company, Navigade, can help guide and support you through the Medicaid application process. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, Ben. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast. Hey, Elizabeth. How are you? Thank you for having me. Thank you. I I appreciate being here. And I I know I was supposed to be on earlier and I don't know, a couple months back, but a lot, a lot's been going on, but I'm glad that we're finally able to be here together. Yes. I appreciate your hospitality and patience along the way too. 
Oh, no worries. I mean, we give caregivers a lot of grace uh, for sure. And nothing is more important to me than family. So I want to first say that I'm sorry for the loss of your dad, which is why we had to reschedule um, our event. And I know there's a lot, the grief is exhausting and that there's a lot of details that go in, you know, not just your emotional grief, but the the doing is exhausting as well. So I, um, I'm, I'm glad we could make this work. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. It, it was definitely a challenging time and, but you know, you just go, you get through, you, you just keep moving forward and, you know, you try to focus on the positive and everybody else, you know, I did lose my dad, but thankfully I still, my mom is still here and got to focus on her, make sure she's, she's doing okay. And you got to hopefully focus on ourselves a little bit too. Just yes. sneak a few minutes of your, some me time in there, but and keep everybody happy and healthy. Mm -hmm. That goes with but <laughs> Yeah. Wait, wait a segue, wait a segue. <laughs> so we start the show off by some inspiration, words of encouragement from the Happy Healthy Caregiver Jar. It's a very fancy jar that I made for my sister when I transitioned care of my mom to her because it's a lot. Caregiving is a lot of responsibility. Yeah. I um, wanted to just share this and get your thoughts on it. So it says, we generate fears while we sit, we overcome them by action. We generate fears wow. while we sit, we overcome them by action. So I know that's deep. Um, I, it's funny because yeah. I actually teach, I, I speak, um, when I'm not podcasting and doing the other things I do, I'm a, I, I'm a speaker for employers and different organizations. And one of my topics is actually worry warts, um, uh, about taking care of business and taking taking action. Um, because sometimes I think we do get in our head a lot and we start to think about all the fears that we have. And it's gonna relate, I think, a little bit to what we talked to today, but mm -hmm. sometimes the best way to mitigate a fear is by taking action. What's your thought on that? I would agree, I would agree. I, I think that, I mean, listen, from uh, experiences you just said, you're, you spend a lot of your time talking for in businesses and, and and whatnot but I think it's true probably I mean and again I wasn't prepared with this kind of words of wisdom that you're pulling out of your <laughs> jar your, your special jar there oh you just but, wait the lightning round's coming too you're um, in for it no, just all right <laughs> um, listen this is I'm excited so yeah. but I would say that that's true because at the end of the day yes there when when you're sitting, so to speak, and not doing, there there are real fear, fears that you can be contemplating that actually exist. I don't mean just getting in your own way, with, like you said, which is true. People get in their own way, get in their head, and create a lot of anxiety that might not even actually exist. But even for the part that actually does exist, I feel like if you go into action mode, you end up realizing that you can over overcome a lot of what does exist and the parts that you can overcome you realize how to cope with that you know what i mean there mm -hmm. are some fears that are real there are some obstacles that are that are real and i mean for sure when you go into the caregiving world and that space um and you know i've been dealing with that for personally for a, a long time i've been for 15 years um, professionally dealing with medicaid assistance and people transitioning to long-term care and personally, I mean, as Elizabeth, as you said, you, you know, I, I just lost my dad who was sick for a number of years with ALS, a terrible disease. And mm. I was extremely, extremely involved in his care. And yeah, there is a lot of fear, especially when you're looking down the kind of the barrel, you know, of an ALS kind of, um, you know, diagnosis. But when you actually get into action, you deal with it and you deal with it in real time and you do the most you can and you try to bring out the, the biggest quality of life and the most that you can get out of technology and different supportive tools and people that exist around you realize that as much as you can do away with the problem you can make that problem a whole lot better like mm -hmm. you know you can live with a problem and you can figure out how to create life with that issue versus just succumbing to the challenge and just curling up into a ball so yes it's a very true um, you know it's, fre I, it's fresh for you i did not realize your dad had als um i recently spoke at als of georgia and 
it's a tough, it's tough, right? It's a tough audience. It was the ALS care partners and their caregivers and it's, there's no cure for ALS. And so right. how, how do you, how do you find joy in together as a care team while you're declining um, and, and deteriorating with ALS? It's, it's, it's a struggle. And as for me as a caregiver coach, like it's hard to coach people um, when there's just so much trauma and anticipatory grief happening in their day-to-day -day life. So yeah, you've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. Tell us a little bit more, Ben, about your caregiving experience with your family in particular. Well, okay. I can, I mean, for me personally, so again, like I just said, I just, just finished, uh, you know, many years of being very involved with my, with my dad and, he was just, uh, he was a phenomenal person. He was actually my role model for mm. almost everything I did in my life. And many people's dads are that, but he, even in his, in his sickness, like you just referenced, it's so hard to find happiness and, you know, all that, because it's such a, you said there's no cure and there's no, but my, you know, we, we, we learned a lot from him along the way. He was never, I don't think we've saw him even, semi-depressed for one day wow so not diagnosed he literally made the most out of every day he was happy he was you could see the happiness on his face he was he would laugh and smile and all that even after he couldn't talk or do much and he was he was a a, a tremendous role model for myself and my whole family i i will say we've you know and we did try to take care of the best care of him as possible we were very involved i do come from a very large family i'm actually one of 15 siblings. oh my yes i did see so, that i thought my family was big i'm one of six yes I, and six ooh, is big there's <laughs> this, oh my goodness <laughs> yes what did your mom feed you guys growing up she, Pasta. She, yeah, she's like superwoman yeah. she, really, she had us all and she took care of us and gave us a lot of attention and everything. So I, I don't know. I, I don't have 15 and I can't imagine quite no. that. So, um, but growing up with a very large family, I grew up with my great grandmother moving into our ha home when she was 99. Um, she lived till 102 in our house, in our house with all these kids and every and everything, just because it was she had gotten too old for my grandparents to take care of her because they were aging. Um, so my parents took her in and didn't just take her in, took care of every, you know, everything she needed. And my my dad had hired a nurse's aide to be with her um, during the day at first, and then towards the end, even overnight, you know, 24 hours. So. I was I was pretty young. I was a young young teenager when that was going on. So I kind of had a lot of exposure to what it means and what what's involved with caring for somebody who's really aging and needs, becomes dependent on their mm -hmm. their their surroundings and not self dependent. So um, it it was. And those are formative really years for you, for sure. Yeah. As a youth, yeah. to see that it's there's. A, you know, I've talked to both my kids on the podcast before and just to kind of get their perspective on it as a as caregiving from their seat. And it's interesting. And I think it does. Um, there's there's a lot of strengths that come from witnessing uh, the care of your grandmother like that and seeing, you know, the importance of family values and how the group pitches in and, and having um compassion for the aging process uh and and also for your your parents who are juggling a lot of different things yeah no, I, can't I can't imagine and and i'm curious too like ben with your siblings i think about this with my siblings as i'm a 51 year old woman and one of six kids is like the chances of me having to be there for one of my siblings is is also stronger how do you all talk about like, or do you talk about like end of life and maybe this current situation with your dad has prompted some of those discussions? I, I, I don't know. I'll be honest. Honestly, that's not a conversation we have a lot. We're much more um, like even with my dad and being as sick as he was, we were so focused. And that was based on what his wishes and everything just focused on keeping doing everything possible, but focusing on just the care mm. 
getting everything that was done. It wasn't a big, big focus on the end of life, although it's obviously a reality and it's, you know, yeah. but I, I think that part of what we've been through and I, I even my, my, you know, my great grandmother lived till 102. Wow. And, and, you know, she was well into 102 and, and she, she was walking and talking and everything till, till the very, very end. It, even there, it was like, it wasn't like, oh, so she's so old. So it's an end of life type of thing. It was like, I mean, end of life is, is, is a reality and it's, and it's, it's okay. You know, you do live the life to the fullest. You would be the best person you can be and you just leave your best mark that you can. And that's just, that's the only thing to do because after you're gone, you're gone. And, and it's only what you've, you know, any, any lessons or, or that you've been able to teach others or, or do, you know, perpetuate good for the future. So yes, ultimately that's really what it's about. But we, um, so I, we, I don't know about that. I, I don't know how to best answer that as far no, as like, it's fine. honestly, but I was curious cause it's kind of fresh in my head lately, particularly I have a brother that's single. He's got married. He doesn't have kids. Like I've got an older brother. It's a developmental disability. So his, he's, kind of more situated, but, um, you know, I have some single siblings that, you know, for me, like having been through the end of life process a couple of times, I have felt like I want to be present and I want to just savor every minute with them. And by having some of these things outlined allows me that gift and, and also with them to, to kind of be present. So it's, I don't have it all worked out either. That's why I'm kind of just, I thought maybe you would have some answers for me, but so we'll, we'll figure well, it out. We, we, we'll figure we, it out together. Yeah, we could, we could. Figure that out <laughs> and there are, there are definitely some things that, you know, that we can, we can touch on and, and that would, that make the end of life, um, I guess, journey, not that I wanted this, I guess this conversation to be about end of life. It was no, about yeah. living with life and even as you, as they, as people age, but the, the truth is, you know, if, if people are aware of what, what's involved with taking care of seniors as they age, it definitely creates a much more pleasant and first of all, longe- longevity and quality of life off the bat, no question. I mean, that you'll see every day. But even when you go to that end of life, you know, uh, piece of it, that it it definitely creates much more quality of preparedness. And you're not, you know, you could really embrace what's going on, knowing that you created the best environment for yeah. the for the senior, for the caregiver a realistic environment, every single person, you know, it's one of the things about people. There's like, we're people. We're not like things. You Robots. Know I mean? not yeah. Exactly. So every person's situation is different. Their mental, their social needs, their, you know, cognitive ability, their, their family dynamic, their physical, you know, people ask all the time. So when someone gets old, should they be in a nursing home? Should they be at home? Should they be in assisted living? And it's like, that is not a question that is one size fits all. That is no. like, okay, where do you live? Well, if you live in some center city somewhere with in a high rise in a small apartment, yeah, chances are you can't stay at home because it's very hard to make that handicap accessible and so on and so forth. But if you live in a ranch on some, you know, then maybe, and there's, care that's available in that area of home care and other things and of course if somebody could stay at home and get the appropriate care that they need to give their physical support and their medical support then of course in a in a cognitive and 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 emotional way they still feel their youth they still feel their independence because that's where they always were now on on the flip side there are times that people are at home and naturally there's they they live somewhat of a secluded life because their adult children are adults and they have their own families and whatever else is going on. So there's no one there present. So therefore, yeah, of course, an assisted living or, you know, whatever it is might be the best because now you're giving them a situation where they're safe, but they also have a social life. So yes. it's so dependent. It's a puzzle. People. It's like it is. Exactly. And then, like you said, it's not a one size fits all approach and that every every situation um 
is different. And, you know, I, I coach a lot of caregivers and, you know, some of them feel guilty. They're like, well, I don't even have my person in my house. I'm, and I'm like, you're still a caregiver. There's still so many things you're doing. It, the roles change, but there's still a big um, task there in place. I want to talk about, um, you know, the, the meat of our conversation around um, Medicare, Medicaid in particular. But first, before we do that, I kind of feel like we need to kind of get some some definitions and some stuff out there so okay. that people know what we're, we're, we're talking about. So in your words, what's the difference between Medicare and Medicaid? Okay, so it's a very commonly made mistake, you know, exactly. or, or just, you know, it's at, which is very understandable. But they're both they're both. I mean, the similarity is, is that I know you asked me what the difference is, but I'll start with the similarity is that they are both programs that the government offers that cover different health benefits. That is the similarity. The difference is, is that Medicare is really part of the social security system. Um, and basically if you're at retirement age and I guess the other, for the most part, you would have had to pay into social security taxes in your working life, um, then you, you're eligible for Medicare. And Medicare, basically, if you think about it, most of us, I'd say just working people, you know, um, which is the majority of the, our, our country, we, you, you have some sort of private health insurance, um, mm -hmm. of some sort. Um, and Medicare, for the most part, replaces that private health insurance um, the thought process is very simple. If you just simplify it, obviously there's more to every picture, but when people are working, most employers give health insurance as a benefit, even if you have to pay towards it or not, depending on your employer, depending on where you, what state and all that stuff, but your employer offers you health insurance and that's how you go to the doctor. And if one has to go be hospitalized, so on and so forth. Um, most people, once they reach 65, 67, they're, they're, they're no longer actively working. They would naturally lose such a benefit because they don't have an employer yeah. and the government says you've been paying your social security taxes all these years here's what you get back for paying into that we are now offering you your health insurance that you can use at the doctor in the hospital and so on medicaid is not part of the social security system it's actually part of the welfare system but it is for aged medicaid institutional medicaid for seniors um it is a um it's it's a long term care insurance where Medicare is not a Medicare is a regular health insurance. Medicaid is long term care. It covers custodial care and it covers a whole lot of other things that are associated with long term care, mm -hmm. like transportation, because people that are in long term care situations usually need to get medically transported to doctor's appointments and to other things, but you know, back and forth, or to an adult daycare or to other um, appropriate you know, support that would need to give them some sort of medical care or other mm -hmm. other care. So Medicaid covers the long-term care, custodial care, or, you know, and that can be in a variety of settings. That can be in, it can cover home care, can cover assisted living facility care in some states and some states it doesn't. And it can um, cover skilled nursing facility, nursing home care. So um, that's that's the basic difference. It's a short term a short term insurance, like day to day insurance, versus a long term care insurance. And for Medicaid, you don't just get it when you turn a certain age. It's about you have to be financially and clinically eligible to be approved for Medicaid. And and it's a pretty it's a pretty involved process to make sure because it's there's a lot of paperwork that is involved, and it's it's something that is. You know, it's it's there are two challenges with it. There's a lot of paperwork, and most people don't know exactly what it is that Medicaid needs. Many people don't have all the paperwork accessible um, for their mom or their dad or you know whoever it is that they're, they're they're caring for, and it usually happens during the time when someone's transitioning to long-term care because your usual scenario is, you know, mom, dad, whoever it may be, might be 85 years old and pretty independent but suddenly falls down the steps slips on the ice does something like that that can happen to anybody but seniors are definitely a little more prone and something breaks something goes wrong they end up in the hospital 
Now they're in the hospital, so they have their coverage, they have their care, they may have gotten a surgery, they may have not, whatever it was, and now they, they're, the hospital is no longer the place for them, they have to be discharged to a rehab facility. So now all this just happened. Now all of a sudden the rehab facility tells you, yeah, mom's doing rehab, but she can't really go home anytime soon. She's going to have to stay here and, and you know, be cared for for the foreseeable future or, you know, whatever. And now you're dealing with mom being put into a facility. You're dealing with potentially a, an anxious spouse at home who's your dad, you know, your the the, the, the spouse of this, of mom. Or, and you, you have, and now all of a sudden you have to figure out this long-term care insurance they have to get in place so that, this facility that's caring for it can be paid. So it gets, it comes at a very. Yes. A crisis. It, usually it's, it's a, a family, crisis. It's a exactly. family crisis. I mean, it's not like people, like you said, like even when we were talking about our siblings, like we're not sitting around talking about this stuff. Um, I, I can tell you that, you know, I've learned a lot through happy, healthy caregiver and talking to different people, but I'm still learning so much every day. And one of the first big learnings I had as a family caregiver for my parents was Medicare, the one that you get when you get at a certain age, does mm-hmm. not pay for anything long-term care related. And the assisted living communities are so expensive. My mom was in a couple and she's on the highest level of care, but not in a memory care. And it was a used car every month. I want to say like 8,000, 9,000 is a very yeah. nice, a nice community and um, in a metro area. But it was you know, luckily, my parents had the financial means privately to pay for that. But then on a on a flip side, my husband cared for his mom who had lung cancer. She was divorced. So things were happening. Like you said, she had lung cancer and she started getting weak. She fell. It was like one crisis after another. We were able to kind of do it for a while. And then at some point, he's applying for Medicaid for his mom. She's not employable anymore. She's divorced. She has some beat up car. She's in like subsidized kind of housing. And I want to say he got denied um, six or seven times from that process. And I watched from the sidelines as he was like beating his head against the wall. And we were thinking, if if my mother-in-law and my kid's grandma can't get Medicaid, like who gets Medicaid? Like it was so... Nice so frustrating to watch that struggle she never did end up getting it before she passed and a lot of the financial stuff came out of pocket for us i mean it was um some of it we didn't pay like some bills and things it was like they couldn't really come come for us but it was uh you know but we made sure that you know her needs were her basic needs were being met so tell this is how we enter into the conversation of your business and um, navigate. So tell me how you got into this business and um, how navigate can help people with this frustrating process about getting their loved ones um, hopefully successfully applied for Medicaid. Okay, so I can definitely I can definitely share that with you. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, first of all, I definitely I referenced my great grandmother. I didn't even get to the to the to the part that. Years later, my great grandmother had passed away, and then my mother's parents had got old. You know, they 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 were up there, well, well up in their eighties, and my grandmother got you know she got sick, and my grandparents moved into my parents' house as well. Then, so this was when I was much older teenager. You know, I was not ten, eleven. I was more like twenty, and and I I saw that transition as well, where they moved in and my parents cared for them. So I always had this kind of, I guess, upbringing, uh, you know, from from my upbringing, it was just being involved with care. And it wasn't like we just watched, you know, we weren't just spectators. We were involved with the care, both my great grandmother, my grandparents. And and then ultimately, like I said, my, you know, your dad, my dad got sick and I, we were very involved with his care, um, you know, for sure. But along the way, I ended up uh, year, many years Many years ago, at this point, um, close to twenty, we uh, I was I was working in, actually in a nursing home. I was going to go for administration on, on, the, on the nursing home side, and was very involved in the interacting with the patients and their families um, on their insurance on coming in and what's and this Medicaid was constantly a struggle. It was always it was all of a sudden like something like they didn't have enough going on. Now all of a sudden they were like, okay, now we have to get Medicaid, and it's not something you could just do because. Medicaid basically wants to understand, is this individual eligible? Are they a citizen of the country? 
Are they, you know, what's their financial situation? Because Medicaid is viewed as a payer of last resort. So therefore, they always want to make sure that you have re- exhausted all of your resources and then you're eligible for Medicaid. Mm. So they want to make sure if somebody had $100,000 in their bank and now they said, hey, I need Medicaid. So let me just write out my $100,000 check to my wonderful daughter, Elizabeth. Mm-hmm. And, and now let me get Medicaid. Met that the gov- that Medicaid is not one of the, they, that, that does, is not allowed. Right. So that's why they ask for financial history. They ask for five years worth of financial history and not just bank accounts, anything of financial value um, in stocks, bonds, uh, in life insurance, um, assets, including cars, houses, you know, property and anything. So it's it's an extremely and I just witnessed that all of these families trying to figure out, like, oh, I don't even know where mom's bank accounts are. I don't know where they are. I I, you know, I, I wasn't taking care of her finances her, her whole life, you know, and there was always this, this constant struggle. And it was, a, it was really a struggle on the family of the, of these, of these seniors that needed care. Um, so, you know, I, I've helped many of them while I was working on that side of it. And then I realized, you know, there's a big need here and, and, you know, so setting up a system that people can get the help, um, you know, there's a big community out there. There's a lot. We, for example, in the work that I do, I work with many elder law attorneys because there's a lot of um, rules and regulations and potential exemptions that people don't have to utilize all their money. They can save some of their money. But again, so we, what we, what I've set up as non-attorneys is what we can do. We initially set up a company, Senior Planning Services, um, known as SPS to many, where we can help these individuals through the paperwork part. The paperwork part is extremely time-consuming, extremely difficult, and very foreign and unknown. People sure. get stopped, people get they they get tripped up. Um, you know where to get th- something as basic as can you prove mom citizenship. Now, if you don't know where she keeps her paperwork, how are you going to do it? So if you have to. How do you know where my own paperwork for that would be? Like a birth right. certificate, I guess. A birth certificate, know. right? Yeah. So now, <laughs> yeah. So now we got, so what we do is we're really good at knowing, okay, how do you order a copy of a birth certificate? How do you get this? How do you get the bank statements? And what's Medicaid looking for in the bank statements? What, why are they asking you for bank statements? They're not just asking you because they want paperwork. They want to see, did you spend your money appropriately or did you give it away? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on? So that's really. There's an art to it. I mean, like it takes you for you to do it, for me to do it. It's like a one, one process. I've got to learn the vocabulary. I've got to learn the process. I've got to, but for you all who are doing this all the time, it's just part of what you do, you know, and it's like an accountant who knows the accounting tax code, you know? um, Yeah. It's like, it needs, it needs a specialist um, for sure to help you navigate these murky waters and like you said usually it's during a crisis where the last place you want to be is looking for documents and in front of computer you want to be you know either taking care of business or taking care of your loved ones um what the one thing that you said though that like this is part of the i had an instagram live with a guest recently who said and i guess i'm checking on this is like there's a that you I had always thought Medicaid in the long-term care, like a external community thing and how important that was, but you can use Medicare money for, and you said this earlier, like home care. And in some cases, in some states, Medicaid um, money could even be used to help pay the family caregiver to do home care is what right. I understood. And that sometimes that, that in that situation, there would not be a five-year look back. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, so it really depends. There's a lot of different programs. You yes. know, Medicaid is not one. Generally speaking, on a federal level, because Medicaid is a is it's a, interesting. It's it's a it's a shared program um, as far as financially, but budgetary. So it's really a a, a federal program, but it is administered state by state by mm. each individual state, and they the the budget is is shared as well. So there are certain general rules and guidelines that come on a federal level. So nationally, that's the way that's the the the, the rules. So like for example, the five year look back is a is the general rule that that's how long Medicaid can can look back. And the point to that is I'm just going to digress for a second there is if somebody has assets and they wanted to go do a state planning and set up trusts and protect their assets. 
they can do that. And after five years, that money is no longer accessible, you know, vis-a-vis a Medicaid application and a Medicaid due diligence. So that's a whole nother, which we can get to, you know. Yeah, to, no, to those are our, those are learnings oh. I've been learning too. Like if you own property, maybe talk to your elder law care attorney about yeah. talking, yeah, exactly. look into a trust because yeah, we're learning all the time. I call this financial self-care, by the way. This is like stuff that is that worry and those fears in our brain. And, you know, even with my husband, it's like, what if something happens to one of us? Like what, you know, how are we going to pay for that? What does that look like? Um, just because we don't want to, you know, replicate the same scenario for our kids, for sure, is part of the motivation. So what is somebody, what is what is using your um, navigate process? Like what is, so I know I want to look into this Medicaid thing. I'm a caregiver. I can see this, this train coming. Um, I want to kind of figure this out. I, I hear about um, navigate. What do I do? Okay, so I mean, just to do it. So, and also to answer your other <laughs> question before, yeah. <laughs> for, for a second, is that there are programs that there are sometimes if you're home in home care in certain states, they don't have the same look back, right? So mm. you can get you eligible without Medicaid looking back five years or even sometimes a year. Sometimes it's a month or three months, but generally there is a, a, a whole lot of paperwork and information that you have to provide. So. After being in this space for about 15 years, I, you know, helping people thankfully helped tens of thousands of families, you know, over the years to, to obtain their benefits and made their lives a whole lot easier. Yes, I bet. Process, and ultimately made, got, made sure that people got the care they need. And, and Medic, I mean, because you have to also, and I'm going to get to navigate in two seconds, but Medicaid <laughs> no worries. is a phenomenal tool that the government offers. It really is. It's something that allows people to age in their appropriate settings. So it can cover home care if that's where someone is best suited. It can cover a nursing home if that's where someone's best suited. In many instances, it can cover assisted living if that's where someone's best suited. And and or if someone's at home, but they have to go to an adult daycare so that, to make sure during the day they're busy and, and stimulated and cared for. So there's so many, so much that Medicaid offers that to ensure that people don't only have the medical coverage, but the right setting that mm. that into so they stay to keep them safe happy. and happy and healthy. Yeah. Yes, yes. I mean, that's your whole thing, happy and healthy. But it's really <laughs> true because if you're not happy, you're probably not healthy. Right. And if you're not healthy, you're not happy. So you you need the right care in the right place so that mentally, emotionally, socially, you know, you, you're, you're getting the right stimulation and you're getting the right, just environment, atmosphere and, and interaction and all that. And it's very, that's, that's just an, an um, amazing thing about Medicaid. Um, so we, we launched, you know, over time, I realized that there's so many people um, like yourself, like myself that are relatively young, but may have aging parents, you know, we're not, we're anymore. getting younger, by the way. We're all getting younger, right? <laughs> yeah. So we, you know, and all of a sudden, and you realize that, and it, we're just in the day and age and the time and place where people are are accustomed and used to and dependent on doing things that are accessible online, on your phone. It's just, you know, that's how you get help. That's how you, people, they need help. They go to Google. How do I do this? You know, what what's the, so we we were able to figure, you know, create a, a tool that for those people that really want to kind of get through this process on their own, you know, where you want to kind of apply for Medicaid for your mom, dad, or whoever it is that your the caregiver is caring for. Um, and, but you realize that you can't really do it fully on your own. So this tool with Navigate, it really walks you through the process by simplifying the steps that are involved, you know, versus, you know, if someone went and got a, a government application from Medicaid and it was 16 pages long and there was no, a lot of information, you, you know, a, a, ta- a tab, a, a table of assets and you're not sure what you should list or what you shouldn't list. And we're versus, you know, come on to navigate. Hey, what's your name? What's your relationship to the, yeah. you know, you'll get it in what, English. Yeah. yeah not what government. Kind of Medicaid- what kind of Medicaid do you, you know, what kind of care do you need? What state do you live in? Where do you, you know, and then it's like, you know, you're answering just questions. Where does mom live? What is her, you know, is mom married? Is she single? Is she widowed? Is she divorced? Is she, you know, all these different types of 
things. And all of those questions are answering and filling out the application for you and really simplifying it. And when it says, you know, is mom a U.S. citizen? Yes. We provide one of the following. Do you have a copy of her passport, of her birth certificate? If the answer is no, then it's a hail to tip. How do I get that? Here it is. Here's the form to request a birth certificate. Do you, you know? So it really. I love the spoon fed. It's spoon fed. Spoon <laughs> fed. And it, yes. And, and nobody, it's not because people aren't intelligent or capable. It's that it's something foreign. And like we kept, we said a few times already, you're dealing with these situations usually in crisis. And instead of having another convoluted, difficult task that you have no idea how to, how to deal with, or, or just, you know, get over this this huge obstacle. We say, you know, come to navigate my mynavigate.com and we'll kind of just walk you through it. It's not yes. intimidating. It's broken down into very easy to answer questions. And when you have something that you need to do, we can give you the how-to tip. This is how you get this information. Why is there why are they asking for this? There's a whole lot of information that's shared. And if you're still stuck, you could always say, can I chat with a representative? Yeah, help or still, which right. I love because so, and it's affordable. This is an affordable very, tool. Very affordable. Yes, we're, and, we're, around $100. In, and in then, introductory year, it's still $99. We, not, we yes. feel like the price point, it probably needs to be a bit higher, but still extremely affordable. Not, yes. thousands. I'm talking about a couple hundred dollars. And yeah, well, I mean, for sure. It's like, I know creating software is, I'm, I'm, you're talking to an IT product manager. So I know there's a lot that goes into that. You do offer the Happy Healthy Caregiver listeners 10% off yeah. um, with the code caregiver so we'll put that in the show notes for as a reminder and also link to to um mynavigate.com in there so i i know that we would have spent that money in a heartbeat back with my mother-in-law like because we were literally banging our head against the wall and it would have been so nice to know that we and like confident that we had done the process right and then when the results came back I had somebody to talk it through who could walk us through um, kind of the next steps or maybe try this or wait this long and do it again or just something like other than right. just a denial that her whatever it was, $870 social security check was too much money, which who can live on that? I'm not sure. But anyway, OK, well, that's a yeah. lot of good stuff there. Anything else you want to say about Navigate, Navigate or Medicaid or any of that before we move into self-care? Not, nothing really. Okay. Uh, again, like I said, Medicaid is a phenomenal. It's really it's a very, very universal program. It helps so many people. And I'm just I'm really glad that we were able to successfully launch, you know, Navigate that you know, mynavigate.com because we were able to give that access, like you said, for a very affordable a hundred dollars. Yep. Well, really the capability of making sure that they have access to the care for their loved ones in a much more simplified and unintimidating and just easy to use kind of way. And it's something that being in that position of, of helping people with Medicaid and being involved with caregiving for so many years, it's really, it's really something that we are feel great, re feel really good about and are proud of that we were able to bring something like this, uh, a first market kind of, kind of deal where it really helps people in a unique way. It does. It does. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you to be a happy, healthy caregiver partner to offer um, the just because not only are you helping families with um, providing them a safe place for care and all of that, but you're helping family caregivers not, you know, reduce their mitigate their burnout and their frustration of having all of these things to worry about. And that speaks to, to me for sure um, for that. So speaking about self-care, Ben, what does your self-care look like? Like, what are some of the things that you do to take care of yourself and just show up so that you can continue to help other people in your life? Oh, no. If you ask my wife, she'll say not enough. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we can always improve. We're a work in progress. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's I mean, it's it's really hard because I like I said, and I and I do I keep I know we reference this a few times. I, I was, you know, I do have six beautiful children and I oh, wow, you have six you know, kids. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's, you know, that's a handful and that's time consuming. And 
and time consuming in a great in the greatest way. And um, I did have my dad who I was caring for. I also do have, you know, you mentioned as well that you have a developmentally disabled, you know, sp- uh, special needs brother who mm-hmm. also t- take care of as well. Um, and then my mom is not too young herself. So you'll um, never be bored, Ben. Never be bored. And because of the way, I guess, what we've learned from my parents, I actually do also take care of a couple other seniors that don't have families. So I'm actually their power of attorney for a couple of people that are just don't have anyone to care for them. So I, I'm involved with their care. One of them is actually in a hospital right now as we speak. Oh, um, wow. One of them is in a nursing home, but we're, you know, I, I, it's, it's, but, but. To your point, I think it's very important that the caregivers stay happy and healthy as well, not just the people that they're caregiving for. Um, so with that, I mean, honestly, like I said, if you ask my wife, she'd be like, you don't do anything for yourself. You're just running and running. But I do have, I, I, I run and I try to make sure I get out and I run at least two to three times a week. And I try to do it outside as often as possible, whether it's winter or summer, because mm-hmm. getting out there and getting fresh air and being outside and getting exercise, it's good for your body. It's good for your mind. It's good for everything. Your soul. Everything. Yes. Well, all. that is something. I think that's great. Uh, let's, let's go through the, well, okay. So this is the lightning round. I'm going to pull some prompts from my journal, the just for you daily self-care okay. journal. And I mark some pages. We'll see. Um, your score might be higher than you think. So you kind of mentioned one already, but like what activity could you do that combines physical movement with spending time with someone? So a twofer, I call those like a buy one, get one. Like as caregivers, sometimes it's so hard to splice up our time. So is there something that you could do for your self-care, like an activity that you enjoy that you could also bring your wife or a child or somebody else around? Like, what would that look like? Well, so you could, because you can, uh, running, you could always do with somebody else, but my wife's not a runner. I actually, we, we, we took tennis lessons a while ago because we are like, that's a good two for thing yeah. you know, with somebody else. But I'm telling you, the whole six kids thing, it, 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 it kind of petered out. So we definitely made a big effort there. And we did it for a little while where we had this, hu- you know, husband, wife tennis matches going on. Um, but I do try to get out for, you know, do, do some nature walks or perfect walk run with the wife. Maybe even if if the baby, you know, we have a one year old. So we put, it, wow. put in the jogger stroller and kind of all three of us. So it's actually more than a twofer. <laughs> yeah. No, then it's just like you start kind of exponentially growing. And I think I'm like, you're more than sandwich generation. You're like, I don't know, club sandwich, whatever. Sandwich means squeeze between kids and right. aging parents. But I used to say if I, my life was a sandwich, it was sloppy Joe, but I'm not sure <laughs> what kind of sandwich you got going on there. That'll give you some, some food for thought. Um, and who's a person that inspires you? Oh, a lot of people, but I, I will say this. I, I mean, I've met some, I work with, and I've, I've met along the way, some, some great people. I have great partners. I have some great, great employees. And, um, but I will say I definitely, my, my, my parents as, as both of them and probably on a, a certain level, my, my dad who, you know, obviously just passed, but he was definitely my, you know, it inspired me for a lot of what I do or try to do. I, I can't say I do it all as well as he does or did, that's for sure. But but just always always being there ready and up for the challenge in a way that you just do what you have to do and try to mm. be the best person you can be and especially to other people. So I'm sure yeah. like I know he was proud of you and I'm sure he's, you know, look, you know, wherever looking and proud of you as well. We say in my family, both of my parents are deceased. And so like sometimes my dad was definitely the business savvy one and did not know about happy, healthy caregivers started after he passed. And some of my siblings have their own businesses. And so we call each other and we say, what would dad do? What would dad say? Like, um, we could relate. Yep. All, all 15 of us do that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Even um, in this recent time that he just left us, but everyone's like, what would he do? What would he, you know, so yeah. for sure I could relate to that. I love that. Um, What's your favorite thing about fall? 
today's the first day of fall that we're recording this, but like, what do you oh, like really? about this? Yeah, I think so. It doesn't you, you feel like it in like Georgia. You could have sent me like an email, like, hey, I'm going to oh, ask. Oh, no, this, this, is, <laughs> this is lightning round. You don't get heads up. No okay, heads up. Apparently you don't. <laughs> Last question though, what, what's one thing you like about this season? Well, very simple. One thing, I don't even have to get that deep. It's just that I, I think that there's the, the just the colors, you know, when, when all that starts, it just- What part of the world are you in? Do you live in? I'm in New Jersey. Okay, that's what I thought, but yeah. Oh, you get the colors so nice yeah, up there. I'm from I, Pennsylvania originally, but now I live in the South. It's not quite, quite the uh -oh. same. Okay, so yeah, so you definitely get it. And also, like I said, I do go running, so- when you're running on like the, these nature trails during the fall, um, other than watching out for a lot of like big piles of wet leaves so you don't slip because they could be deceiving, you know. Real. Yeah, or acorns. Have you ever just like, woo? Yeah. Yes. But, but outside of that, the, the colors while you're running through, like the, the foliage is is definitely good for, it just keeps you, it does something. It does I, something that's really nice. Yeah, it's mother nature with her paintbrush for sure. Exactly. Any other parting words of wisdom you'd like to add or, and how do people learn more about what you have to offer, Ben? Um, okay. So my part, I mean, my only, not that I feel like I have such, such wisdom. I just have some experience, but. That's it. You're the expert. Um, so, but I will say this, I, I will, t I can tell you that, and I've told this to people and I've, you know, always just. Thinking about the future, I guess, is always important. You don't have to harp on it. You don't have to spend all your time. It's much more valuable to spend your time in the present here and now and live life to the fullest. But knowing that things, you know, especially if someone has parents that are getting older, they're aging, they're not old, they're still active. It's thinking about, okay, where does mom and dad keep their files you know where are where's their paperwork is it in order you know are things in one place does mom still have 30 different bank accounts because when she was younger they used if you open up an account you got a free you know uh fanny pack and mm. you know everybody was opening accounts all over the place because that's stuff that will cause you grief trip you up create denials or questions or for coverage of Medicaid as people get older. So you you just want to be aware, like where do mom and dad, dad take care of their, where's their files, what's their stuff? Do they still have old bank accounts open? Let's close them up. While they're still young and active and engaged and you tell them we're not doing this because they're going to get all nervous, like, oh, well, wait, I'm, not, I'm still here. You could just say that old stuff is only going to cause you, you know. So it, it's a lot of times just being aware of, mm -hmm knowing that the future is inevitable and that you want to just try to get your bearings on what's going on so that in that crisis mode, you at least don't have as big of a crisis to deal with. Um, I would say even like, I mean, I'm doing that right now at age 51 for my kids. Like I have a partner called My Data Diary. I think actually they're the sponsor of this episode. And it's like a little USB where I can take pictures and I can put it, everything in there. And so then my kids will have this. This little thing. Thumb right. drive with everything on it. And I'll tell them that's exactly brilliant. where it is. That's yeah. Cool. And that's and the it's, way. it's a pain, but it's going to be, it's, I feel good about it. And I know it's going to help them later down the road and me, like, I mean, something could happen to my husband or I, you know, right. and, and one of us, I mean, you, you never know what tomorrow brings. And no, but I, I only say this because we, in, in dealing with so many thousands of families over the last 15 years, you see that so much of the, of the challenge and 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 the some of the the most time consuming or stressful parts of it are the search i don't know and now mom is not doing well so she can't answer our questions or she's starting to get dementia or dad you know and it's like you know you don't want to be in a situation where if you could just take a little bit of effort earlier and just be aware of what is where, where things are and and what's been going on it could really take hours and hours of, of work and a lot of anxiety and stress and, and worry. Good advice. You know, take this, just can take it away. And as far as what else, you know, everyone, mynavigate.com. And if anyone has any personal questions, you could always just send Ben at mynavigate.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions.
Oh, thank you, Ben. You have been um, a trooper to, to put, put me go through the lightning round and do all that. And I just am really grateful that this resource exists for people and that there's smart, wise people out there that are thinking of ways to make this process easier for caregivers because uh, they need all the help they can get. So thank you for what you do and what you provide. Well, you're welcome and thank you. You do, you, you know, you do great, great, great work and happy and healthy is a very important motto to live by, especially in the caregiving world. So thank you and thank you for having me on. And, and for your patience while I had to push off. <laughs> these, uh... No, always. That always. Family's always first. Thank you. Thanks for joining us today on the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast on the Whole Care Network. As always, show notes that accompany today's episode can be found on my website, happyhealthycaregiver.com. Just look under the podcast menu for today's episode image, and that will take you to the page with the links and information we spoke about today. You'll also find other resources on the website along with links to purchase the Just For You daily self-care journal. When you purchase from my website, you'll get a signed copy and for a limited time, free shipping. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider subscribing to the show on your podcast platform. It really helps other family caregivers find the podcast and you'll automatically receive our bi-weekly shows in your podcast listening queue. Maybe while you're subscribing, consider leaving a five-star rating and review or just simply talk it up on your social channels. Let's stay connected. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Happy Healthy Caregiver. And until we meet again, please take care of you. This is the Whole Care Network. Helping you tell your story one podcast at a time.